And what we want to do now is we want to take that, what we just finished, okay, we just finished that, and our mean for um, that was what? 732, 732.50, I think. And the standard deviation for that was $103, right? And so now what they want to do, now they want to add 100, a $100 fee. Get used to that, ladies and gentlemen. Get used to that, okay? They're going to be adding tuition to you every single year you're in college. That's how they make money. Okay, so this time here we'll follow along. Okay, we're going to follow along here and we're going to look at the distribution and then we'll figure out how we get the, the mean and the standard deviation by ourselves. But what they did here was they took that chart, okay, that last chart, the first chart we had looked like this, okay? It had 12 and 13 and all the way to 18. And then they took that chart and they multiplied it times 50. So they had 600 and then it was 650 and so on. And now they're taking that chart and they're adding 100 to all of the values. So now it's 700 and 750 and 800 and 850 and 900 and 950 and 1,000. The probabilities remain the same. What do you notice about the picture? What do you notice about the picture? I hope you notice it's the same. I can show you two other histograms that look just like that. Okay? We have a histogram right there. And we have a histogram, oops, and a histogram right there. And what do you know? They are all the same. Why? Because the shape doesn't change if you shift or if you scale. The shape doesn't change, it remains the same. So the histogram looks the same. The numbers here are different, but the bars are in the same spots, all right? So, now, now, I want you to think, if this is my new definition of the new random variable C, then I want to take everything that I had in T and add 100 to each of those, I want you to tell me what the new mean is going to be and what the new standard deviation is going to be. Try it. Don't, don't peek. Don't peek. Try it. Pause it. Pause the video. Pause it. So you can try it. All right? If you're not pausing it, you're, you're, you're not giving yourself a great chance here. All right? I got 15 minutes. I got to finish this in. I had plenty of time, Mr. Blaze and I started talking about puppies. But I could talk about dogs for So we have to add 100. So we do that to our mean. We take our mean and we add it, 832.50. And then do I take 100 and make that 203? No. No. Because when we're, we're shifting, we're shifting when I'm taking that, that his, the uh, histogram one, two, three, and I move it up to six, seven, and eight, the spread doesn't change. I don't change the spread. My spread stays the same, okay? The spread stays the same when you add something to all of the values. So that's what we have there. Okay, I'll pull the paper away. I will pull the paper away, and there you go. So it says, what happens to the shape, center, and spread? Did your center change? Yes. Did your shape change? No. Did your spread change? No. Okay? So then we have a problem. And that's where we'll finish. That is where we will finish. Black markers, that's what they do. In a large introductory statistics class, the distribution x of raw scores, so x equals raw scores, um, was approximately normally distributed, like that. Normally distributed with a mean of um, 
x, right? So mu of x equals 17.2 in a standard deviation, standard deviation of 3.8. Okay, the professor decides to scale, scale the scores by multiplying the raw scores by 4 and adding 10. Well, we need to come up with a random variable for this. Okay, so uh, let's see. X is the raw score. So we go here. We have all the information we need. We're here. It says define the variable Y as the scale score. Okay, so Y. And then it told me that they wanted me to, they wanted me to multiply the raw scores by 4 and add 10. Well, the raw scores are X. So I would write that as 4x plus 10, all right? Find the mean and the standard deviation. Mean and standard deviation. So here's my mean. Center always changes, right? So I'm going to make this 4 times 17.2 plus 10. 4 times 17.2 plus 10. So let's look at what that's going to be. That's going to be 78.8. That's my new mean, okay? Mu, Y, Mu, Y. Now, my standard deviation is 3.8. But I don't want to shift it, I only want to scale it, okay? So I don't do this to that, but I do multiply that times 4. So 3.8 times 4 is 15.2. Look at that. Pretty good, right? You know how to do that. You can do that. You can do that. It's half a chapter 6 too. You can do it. All right? We'll get to this stuff right back up. So what is now? Now, 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 now. Okay? This brought us back to chapter 1. Okay? I think we did this kind of stuff in chapter 1. Maybe it was chapter 2. I'm not sure. They blend in. This is, this is textbook chapter two. What is the probability that a randomly selected student has a scale test score of at least 90? Okay, so let me see what I want to use for letters for that. I think we're just gonna keep calling it Y. So I want to know what's the probability that Y is greater than or equal to 90? Okay, well guess what? What do we know about the shape? The shape doesn't change. So if this is normally distributed, after we do this, after we do the transformation, it's still going to be normally distributed. So guess what we're going to do? Guess what we're going to do? Come on. Come on. Guess what we're going to do? Watch me. Watch and learn. Watch and learn, and we're going to see a beautiful thing arise here. The normal model. Chapter 2, that's what that was all about. Chapter 2, section 2. The hot dogs, all that stuff. The squirrels, okay? So let's look. Here's our information. So we put a line in the middle. We cut off the tails. We split the uprights. 78.8. We add 15.2 to that. So 15.2 and what's that? 90. 94, and then I add 15.2 to that, and what's that going to do? Uh, I think I did this on a video already. Oh, 9.2. I hope not. I hope I'm not repeating myself, but I might be. I might. I mean, this might. This might be the first thing on the next video. Uh, so where's 90? Where's 90? Well, 90 is right in here. Okay, and I want to be greater than equal to 90. Yeah, I think I. Did. I think I did this on a video already. So it's a repeat, sorry. I actually filmed part two before part one. Um, so let's find a z-score for that. Find a z-score for 90. 90 minus 78.8 divided by 15.2. Yeah, I definitely did this. Uh, z-score is 0.74. So I'm going to do norm CDF. 0.74 to 999, and that probability, that probability is going to be 22-something, two, two, two yeah, I knew it, 0.2296, I did this the other day, sorry, I apologize, 
So when you, when you watch the next video, just fast forward through this problem, that's all. My bad. Okay? I get excited. I get excited. It's almost like I was teaching regular here. Not, not the back of my hand. So, that's our first video for 6-2. Okay? And I apologize for the fact that when you start the second video for 6.2, that this problem will be the first thing you see. So just fast forward through it. You'll be good. All right? Charging the new battery. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for your attention.